Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geoecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to discuss about human ecological adaptation in tropical evergreen biome. So the key catch here is tropical evergreen. So we are going to look at the characteristics, the ecological features, the adaptation types, all these things in today's session. So let's go ahead. Now before going ahead please like and subscribe to the channel the geoecologist on YouTube and also please press the bell icon for the updates Now first thing that we need to understand when in context of biome we are saying the location matters the area of the earth that it covers matters when we are talking about biomes in the earlier concept that we learned about biome what did we learn that biome refers to a particular geographical area on the earth so it has a characteristic associated to its location and extent that's why first knowing the location and extent becomes the prerequisite in order to understand the human ecological adaptations there so what is the location and extent normally the tropical evergreen biome that is also sometimes called tropical evergreen rainforest biome extends between 10 degree north to 10 degree south latitudes from where from the equator so this is the area that is covered by the tropical evergreen rainforest biome they occupy about 7% remember this fact it is 7% of the earth's land surface all across and harbors more than half of the world's flora and fauna so that is the richness that you can see that in just 7% coverage of the land area it harbors more than 50% or close to 50% of the world's plants and animals now tropical evergreen rainforest biome provides optimum environmental conditions it means the best conditions for the growth and development of plants and animals because it is characterized by high rainfall and temperature throughout the year if you look at this particular image it is the tropics that has maximum sunshine entire year and that's why the water cycle is also regulated accordingly and has heavy rainfall as well so what happens this biome is also therefore called optimum biome here is another name for it so remember this it is called optimum biome why because of uninterrupted supply of abundance moisture that is one factor the water factor and the heat factor so what happens where you have heat and water it means regulation of entire convectional cycle entire water cycle all these things ensures the continuous and normal growth of plants it means that producers and consumers both have varieties in this particular belt on the earth so it is the optimum biome as well now let's look at the next aspect that is the distribution so the maximum development of this biome has taken place in amazon basin that is in south america if you see in the image congo basin in africa and indo malaysian region that is some parts of south india and the malaysian region mainly in java sumatra borneo malaysia guinea all these areas so if you look at this particular belt that is the only land part in this particular zone so all those land part have lots of flora and fauna it is highly rich in that this biome has developed in fact in true equatorial climatic region so remember this equatorial climate or tropical evergreen climate all these are synonyms so equatorial climatic region though in some areas the spatial coverage also extends beyond that so in areas which you have mentioned here this veracruz in mexico that is about 19 degree north then again up to 30 degree south in southern american continent so there is an extension as well but larger focus is 10 degree north to 10 degree south of this particular biome now let's look at the climate what is there in terms of its climatic feature so the average annual rainfall remember when we talk about climate two parameters is larger in terms of climate that we discuss always is the rainfall and the temperature so when we look at the average annual rainfall of most of these areas in tropical evergreen rainforest what do we find is about 2000 mm or even more that is about 200 cm of rain is the 
prerequisite is the basic of all the areas under this particular zone and that this particular biome so except two or three months generally every month receives about 200 millimeters of rainfall so it's a heavy rainfall area that we clearly get it the aridity during eight months certainly increases with increasing distance from the equator there is a high temperature throughout the year so remember as we go away from this particular area aridity would definitely increase but remember it has high temperature throughout the year okay that is the one important point to remember then mean annual temperature is how much 20 degree c if i am saying mean it means it may be little ahead of 20 degree c and also little below 20 degree c that's why the mean is somewhere in between so 20 degree c is the mean which is annual temperatures mean but the highest temperature varies touches around 30 degree okay so the sun is more or less overhead throughout the year obviously that's because of it is an equatorial region an annual range of temperature is around but the daily range of temperature varies between 5 degrees to 10 degrees so there is a variation of diurnal range of temperature up to 10 degrees c so it means 20 is the minimum the mean so plus minus 10 so it can also go to 15 to 10 some days and also reach up to 30 some days so that's how the mean annual temperature is recorded now let's come to the species composition a biome necessarily has specific very unique species that are its characteristic feature so what are those species in tropical evergreen rainforest biome let's look at the flora and fauna found there so first of all we'll talk about the flora the plant species the primary producers so what we observe is the tropical evergreen rainforest biome accounts for largest number of plant species in the world okay that's the richness level so though there is almost uniformity and similarity in life forms across the structure of plants all across this particular biome but there is variation as well in terms of plant species so what do you find here is about 6,000 to 7,000 species of flowering plants in Western Africa, that is Congo area, 20,000 species of flowering plants in Africa and Malaysia, and then 40,000 species of flowering plants in Brazil, 2,000 species of flowering plants in Panama Canal Zone. So do you see this example of richness of species? It's in thousands. So that is how this particular biome is characterized by the species richness. So one characteristic that we identify is the high species richness all right then tree is the most significant member of the tropical evergreen forest if you look at these forests in your image you find that tropical evergreen forests is dominated by high trees their diversity is so great it's, it's heavily diverse so it's so great that one hectare of land in the equatorial region accounts for 40 to 100 species of trees so that's the amount of richness it may be pointed out that trees species for 70% of the total plant species of the tropical evergreen rainforest. So trees are the dominant species. What else are there? Creepers or climbers that we say are the second important floral members. So what happens? Trees are the major species and what happens? Climbers or creepers climb over the trees. So it may be pointed out that tropical rainforests account for 90% of all climbing species. Now in terms of climbing species, it has 90%. So maximum creepers and climbers occur in this particular region. Now the climbers are so great influence in this term if you say. So what happens? The plants together have accessibility thing. Why? Because what happens? In such a density of trees and climbers, what happens? The visibility of the sunlight many a times is zero at the ground level. So accessibility in the forest cover becomes difficult. So in these kind of dense forest, heavily dense forest, it's very difficult to access, right? Now, let's understand that climbers, what we say here, are divided into two major groups as presented by P.W. Richards, ecologist. So what are the various classification of climbers? Very short, you can understand. Herbaceous plants is the first thing. Then we have long woody climbers known as lianas. So remember the terminology here is lina. So whenever we hear lina, remember it's talking about tropical evergreen equatorial rainforest. Lianas are the woody climbers, right? 
and the third are important epiphytes these epiphytes which do not have their own roots they grow on the particular trunks and stem of these branches of these trees so what do we find is three major types if you say for example herbaceous plants lianas and the epiphytes are largely all climbers the word is climber so it means they are climbing on the trees and growing so epiphytes now let's look at that because epiphyte is one thing that can be asked in questions in competitive exam as well and also in the university system many times this has been asked the discussion of epiphytes in terms of tropical evergreen rainforest so let's look at the division into four subtypes first is called holo epiphytes the word is holo it means the roots of which never reach ground so it has no connection with the ground it completely occupies the tree branch then we have as hemi epiphytes so hemi is the first evolved of the branches okay and then grows upward but ultimately their root reaches ground later on okay now pseudo epiphytes the word is pseudo remember holo hemi pseudo so first evolve in the ground and then they grow up and establish themselves on the branches now what happens it grows on the ground first and then it occupies the branches and the last one is semi parasite the word parasite is completely dependent so the semi parasite epiphytes are those climbers which get their food from the autotrophic plants they completely are dependent they are parasitic in nature so these are the four types of epiphytes found in this particular biome now let's look at the animal kingdom the fauna there are some unique characteristics of animals of tropical evergreen rainforest that we need to understand by observation so there is a regular and constant supply of abundant food that we understand because it's a rich area so all the primary producers are there plants are there so it's a rich in food area for the primary consumers as well right so for the animals it has lots of food with the result they have not to migrate so what happens normally animals tend to migrate in other ecosystems but here migration is the least why because of abundance of food so this is one characteristic that we need to remember then the forest is full of animal activities throughout the year 24 into 7 so animal activities dominate in this particular kind of forest biome right and then what we have here is animals such as chimpanzee gorilla bison african elephant okapi leopard numerous genre of pigs etc so it's a rich area in terms of fauna as well and remember the factor animal activities dominate in this particular biome now let's look at the number density and diversity of animals in this particular biome it increases from ground layer to this above strata now understand there is vertical increase because of the fact that food supply also increases upward because the upper section of the trees or the forest have more sunlight and that's why they are more rich so what happens many animals are found lying on the branches of the trees so largely branches of the trees or the tree canopies will have more animals than the ground level okay now let's look at ecological productivity so what do we see here this the primary ecological productivity of tropical evergreen biome is highest in the world okay it is just 13% in area and accounts 40% of total net pp and pp that we say is net primary productivity so in terms of primary productivity this is the ratio in terms of area just 13% but in terms of productivity 40% so it's a huge ratio the average net primary productivity is 5000 dry grams per square meter per year remember this unit dry grams per square per meter per year So remember this is the unit of net primary productivity and wood is the main or the largest shareholder in terms of total biomass. So reasons are again as I have mentioned the availability of maximum sunlight and humidity that is their abundance throughout the year so that's the main reason. Now let's come to human interactions and adaptations. So let's talk about human beings. What are human beings in these particular belt doing? It is completely non harmonious relationship remember this area has lots of exploitation and destruction happening so traditionally they were in sync with nature but now the development the adaptation has gone non harmonious it's not in the harmony with nature that is the first important point <clears throat> economic activities are rampant it means lots of economic activities mining industries and agriculture and so many other activities 
lead to the destruction of these particular biome so for example amazon forest we have recently seen fires in amazon forest agriculture intruding into the forest areas deforestation happening at mass level construction of large dams in africa if you go so what has happened the complete clearance of these particular biomes agricultural expansion is happening mass deforestation is happening so these are the major things and apart from that in terms of human adaptation if you see the original inhabitants the aborigines they are being marginalized because of the intrusion from the outside so what happens the forest dwellers who were living in sync with the nature in harmony with the nature are also gradually being pushed so that is when a problem is starting in this particular biome now let's look at plant adaptations so there are certain adaptations by the plants that are done to survive in these conditions of rainforest first let's look at lyana so what does this lyanas do they are woody vines okay and they are climbers as we know so they have roots in the ground but climb up to trees to reach the sunlight that is their purpose so their leaves and flowers grow in the canopy so remember their leaves and flowers have canopy now tree trunks these are tall and thin to allow trees to reach the sunlight so everything is about phototropism here because ground is too dense no sunlight reaches here so tree trunks are long thin that allows them to gain maximum sunlight right and drip tips so what happens plants have leaves with pointy tips this allows water to run off that is because it has lots of moisture and buttress roots so larger roots having ridges which create large surface areas that help to support larger trees so that's the example in the image if you see and lastly epiphytes remember they grow on the branches on the high branches canopy and they get their nutrients from the air water and also from the soil through that particular tree branch so this is largely the plant adaptation things now animal adaptations now just look at the image and i am telling you what exactly they do sloth one of the animal uses camouflage and moves very slowly to make it difficult for predators to spot so camouflage is one thing then what we have is spider monkey has long strong limbs and tail so they hang around that particular tree branches and they feed on fruits and above occurring all those uh, productivities of the primary producers what else the flying frog this is another very important species unique species has fully webbed hands and feet and a flap of loose skin that stretches between its limbs which allows it to glide from plant to plant so because it's such a rich ecosystem of forests it's a based adaptation on that particular premise and if you see toucan it has long large bill to allow it to reach and cut fruits from the branches so right from camouflage to having longer beak these are all animal adaptations so we completed today's session on the tropical evergreen rainforest biome in terms of its characteristics in terms of its extent in terms of its primary productivity in terms of its flora and fauna and lastly the entire adaptation part so in details you can read from various sources about the details of adaptations and collect lots of examples but i completely pointed out the point wise important highlights of the human ecological adaptations and together with that flora and fauna adaptations as well so i hope you like this session thanks for watching and subscribing to the geoecologist keep safe stay tuned and please learn a lot during this lockdown thanks a lot